All right, this is kind of a mess of a problem, but we'll figure it out together. Show that this big ugly mess implies R, so I've conditional here, but it's an ugly hypothesis, isn't it? Is a tautology. All right, so what is a tautology? Here's the definition. We say that a compound proposition is a tautology if it is always true. All right, so I have set up our truth table, and so I've, I've, I've broken it down to all its component parts. And I also, in the standard way, have written out all eight possible permutations of true and false for P, Q, and R. Okay, So I have two possibilities here, true or false, two possibilities here, true and false, two possibilities here, true, false, and so two times two times two is eight. That's how I get eight, and I've written them out in the normal way. So the first time I do half true, half false, I cut that in half again. In this case, it's two true, two false, two true, two false, and then cut that in half again, so it's just true, false, true, false, all the way down. So I know I have every combination, or permutation, rather, of true and false for P, Q, and R. All right. First thing is we have to figure out the truth value of P or Q, and so true here is P and here's Q, so true or true is definitely true. True or true is true. True or false is true. True or false, true. False or true is true. False or true is true. False or false, aha, is false. And again, false and false would give us false. All right. Now I have a conditional if P then Q. I have a little cheat sheet over here that shows me the only time I have a, uh, I have a false result in a conditional is when the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. In this case, when P is true and Q is false, that's the only time I have if P then Q is false. The rest of the time that's true. So we're going to use that over here. And the way I always do this is I just look for that oddball first and then fill in the rest with trues. So in this case, I want to find all the places where P is true and R is false. Those are the only places in this column that I'll have false. And then I'll just go back once I've decided which ones are false, I'll go back and fill in everything that's true. So let's see, I'm looking for, so here's P, here's Q, I'm looking for true implies false. So true implies true, okay? Uh, true implies false, that's one of the places where I have a false. True implies false down here is false. And then I'm okay everywhere else. So I only have two cases where I have false, the rest are gonna be true. And I'm gonna try my best to make these rows sort of straight so that we don't get confused down here. It's easy to get confused when you have so many rows. And so many columns. So um, now we're gonna do the same thing, but this time with Q implies R. So a good thing that Q and R are right next to each other. Again, all I'm gonna do is try to find the places where Q is true and R is false. Well, here's one. I'm going to go ahead and fill in false for that one. And, and here's one down here, the third from the bottom, right? And the rest, I'm okay. They're all true. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in those truth values. They're all true for the rest of them. Now I get that this ugly, ugly mess is a compound conjunction. And for this thing to be true, it makes sense to you, I'm sure. That, that I can't have any falses in here uh, if this is true and this is true and this is true. It can't be that I have any falses. So the only time I'm going to have true is when I have three trues over here. And here, here's an example, I have a true, all right? Here, I, that's not true because look at my falses. So I got to put false then, right? And here, oh, three trues, that's true. Oh, there's a false, so that's got to be false. The, this is all true, so that's true. And the rest, the last three rows uh, of these three columns have a false in there, so they've got to be false. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now, I'm going to be careful, as I said, to compare 
the same row with the same row when I'm switching back columns like this because it's a long way and you can get confused and think you did it wrong, but I think we've managed our columns pretty well in our rows. So here I have, I'm gonna actually do it on this side because I think I'm running out of room. Here is my big ugly mess, which is a, a conditional that has as its hypothesis this big ugly piece right here. All right, so, and then here's my conclusion, which is R, you have this over here. So again, all based on this cheat sheet here, all I have to do is figure out where this column is true, but this column is false. And those are the only places where I have to worry about a false creeping in. So true and false, true implies false means false, the rest mean true. So let's do that very carefully. So here I have true implies true, okay. Uh, here I have a true, but that also implies true. Here I have a true, but that implies true. And then I don't have any other trues in my hypothesis, so they can't possibly be false. Hey, guess what? Nowhere here, therefore, do I have the case where this is false. Well, what does that mean? It's all true. So I'm going to try to do this, right? It doesn't really matter if I line up rows now because it's all true. And sure enough, we've proven that this big ugly mess is a tautology because no matter what my truth values are for P, Q, and R, I always get back true, and that's the definition of tautology.